Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in this week's video, I really want to show you how I have DIY'd and executed my staircase, upper hallway, painting techniques, as well as some inspiration and DIY budget friendly ideas. So I'm going to talk you through the process as well as the techniques that I have used. So let's head over and see what I did. For some that have been following my channel already know that my husband Ryan and I have recently bought a 130 year old heritage home and we're so excited to get started on some of the room makeovers. And we recently have had a new addition to our family which is our dog's actual litter brother and we needed to make some changes around the home. I have recently already started the front entry and I'm really trying to get rid of a lot of the yellow and brown that is throughout this house and we needed to make the staircase which is very steep in this old home a lot more safer so we've actually added in a stair runner but I wanted to add a little antiquity to it so I wanted to DIY some kind of stair rod as I see them all over Pinterest and I knew what I wanted but I couldn't quite find what I was looking for. So I decided to go ahead and take a look on Wayfair and I did find what I was looking for but the price was a little bit higher than I would like to have spent so I thought maybe I can DIY this and share the process with you. For one stair bracket as well as the rod ran me about $60 and I needed 16 of them. So my alternative was finding these cafe rods that I found at Home Depot and they're actually curtain rods. So there is a small size as well as a large size and they're expandable. So at the smaller size it started at two feet but it can expand to four feet but for the actual stair I'm barely going to need about two, two feet and a couple of inches. So these were the brackets that came in the package but we thought instead of putting two screws in we'll eliminate that to one. Now by bending it back and forth it will break because the metal is actually quite thin but we decided to use a actual pliers to go ahead and cut them. When we broke them off we noticed that the inside of the bracket was not actually the matte black so we just used a small sharpie just to kind of straighten the color out. Quickly showing you that you could actually use the whole bracket just as it is to attach it to the stair rise. But again, I wanted to eliminate how many holes I was using and I really only needed to use the one as it will still anchor and have the rod in securely. So all we've done is use pliers to cut it and then use some vice grips that way we could actually bend it back and this will make it nice and flat and flush to the stair. And again, just using the one screw instead of two. Because the staircase is so old, it's actually very steep and I think for modern homes the stair riser as well as the actual step itself is a little bit bigger than what they used to make back in the day. So I wanted to eliminate the bulk as well as have it safely secured. This is a great way to add aesthetics to the stair as well as a little bit of contrast and I love the antiquity look of the stair riser rod. I found this little vanity desk and I absolutely love its style, the nice tall legs. It's perfect. It's going to be great for a little vanity and I wanted to upcycle this by doing a glazing technique and taking you through the steps on how easy it is to work with glaze. This type of clear glaze is just a working medium you can apply to your paint so this is going to change its viscosity meaning it's going to make it a little bit more transparent and allow me to play with the textures and techniques that I want to do for this little vanity. Before I get started I'm going to use the TSP to clean this piece or you could just use a degreasing dish soap and this is just going to help prep the piece before I get started with using my paints. I love the chalk paint look, so I'm going to use the Annie Salome paint in Country Grey. I'm also going to use a chocolate brown on Fleur, 
And I think I'm even going to make a custom mix using the French linen and Paris gray for my glazes. But I'll talk you through the steps on how easy it is. First thing I'm going to do is because I'm using a light color, I'm going to go and put two full coats of the country gray on. Now to get into these little smaller areas, because these little compartments, drawers and slots here, I'm going to use a short palm brush as well as a long handle brush. This will help me get the edges as well as these back recessed areas with a full coverage of paint. Applying a light color to a dark color surface, I would advise probably two coats so that way you're getting good coverage. And for my second coat, I'm just going to add in a little bit of water to help smooth out the top surface and then I can get into my glazing techniques. Using clear glaze allows for a lot of beautiful faux finishes and what I want to create is some beautiful texture. I'm going to make a glaze mix in the brown chalk paint as well as I made a custom French linen and grey color and I've added four parts of clear glaze to one part paint. There are glazes that actually are fun to work with and actually are part of decorative finishes but this kind of clear glaze is only for decorative purpose. It doesn't seal your projects. Once the base coats are completely dry we can get into the glazing techniques. So I've already sampled with the two little drawers that are on the top and this is where I'm going with. It's very similar to a ragging technique or a paint wash but going back to the viscosity it's not drippy and it actually acts as a more translucent color by making this mix of four parts glaze to one part paint. So you could use the color, but that transparency allows you to play with the textures and styles. And this is only one on several I'd like to show you. But for this desk, I'm just going around with a dry rag and I'm just kind of dabbing and making the rag lines give off this really unique texture. And I'm going to do that with the two color mixes I made with the clear glaze. Again, this really limits how messy when working with glaze because its viscosity really holds in place. This allows me some working time as well as I can create as much texture as I want and the concentration of the color tone can be muted down a little bit so I can kind of build up how I want my look. So that my base color is the most light and my French linen and gray mix with the clear glaze is now my medium tone and my brown chalk paint, the on fleur mix with the clear glaze is kind of my darker tone. So I'm working with that three tone method and that's really what's kind of building up the different layers, textures and giving it that really old textured antiquity look. With a lot of different painting techniques I always find the most organic look to make something look more aged is building those layers. So you can put as many of these glaze layers as you want. You can create as much texture as you want. And just so it looks a little more natural, I like to actually just dab on a little bit of the original as a, another layer. And again, once that dries, it just looks like it naturally aged over time. So with the Krylon Flat Matte, this is a paint and primer spray paint. I'm just going to update the original hardware for this piece and this way it won't actually smear off as it's a metal surface. Once all the paint and the glaze is completely dry, I'm going to seal it with a clear wax. And it's just like adding moisture to the chalk paint which will actually enrich the color and the texture I've already created as well as seal your chalk paint to the furniture. Just apply it like a moisturizer and rub off any excess with a clean cloth and it should be fully cured in about 20 days.
the stop about halfway up this wall because I only completed the lower entry and I really would like to finish the upper entry hallway. And this is taking us into the bedrooms of this old heritage home. But I battle with the color in here and I'm so dying to change it. But when you're dealing with old finishes that are 130 years old, there is a lot of knocks. And to disguise this, I just wanted to quickly talk about what paint sheen to buy. So for this old house, I choose to use a lot of the ultra matte and matte finishes and even chalk paint. But for newer homes, this is where the low luster, pearl, soft gloss, semi gloss, or even high gloss paints for your trim, door frames, and even window frames can be hugely beneficial. And you can kind of see how the sheen picks up. But because I have a lot of dings and knocks and things that I want to disguise, I don't really want that shimmer. I'm going to be using a microfiber a drywall slash plaster roller and this is going to minimize my splatter. I'm going to continue with the same color I was using in the ultra matte in the edge cone gray that I started with as I'm continuing up the wall of the staircase. I generally would like to use a paintbrush when I paint the wall. This will limit how many coats I need, but with a roller, I kind of have to because of the area of reach that I need to get to. And it's kind of tricky, so I came up with a couple of little ideas if you ever come into wanting to update your stairwell. When you have really high ceilings or hard to reach places, just using one of those painter extended poles, or you could use a broom mop, all you're gonna do is tightly secure a paintbrush and this way you can extend what you need to reach to those spots and it looks very meticulous it almost looks like it's hard on the dexterity to do it but it really wasn't and it was super helpful this way it limited how much ladder use up and down I had to do so it was actually a handy little tool the reason I'm doing it in the format I am is I don't really want to paint the ceiling and I didn't know how much of the crown molding I was going to paint. So I kind of went with what color I'm starting with and work my way up. Always, always wrap your paint brushes, even if you're taking a 20 minute break. When you're working with wall paints, I find that it dries and it makes your bristles really hard. So really be careful and make sure that you wrap them if you're not going to be using them for a moment. The Wooster brushes, these angle brushes, are perfect, and this is also going to help eliminate how much taping you need to do when you're going into two contrast colors. Both the lower entry and the upper hallway, as well as the staircase, is probably the most difficult time-consuming area of your home that you will need to paint. Painting a room and painting the walls is easy. But now you can identify where I'm at here with plaster versus drywall and trying to match it up so it's nice and even and getting a nice straight coat. Now I really wanted to see if I could salvage that upper color, but as I kept going, I decided I didn't like it and had to figure out what I could do without being too costly to change that crown molding color. But as you can see, there's a lot of detail to cover. Now for the downstairs, I really like the black contrast for the trims and the door frames as well as my doors. And I had used Athenium Black for downstairs and found something that's very comparable which is Onyx by Benjamin Moore. And again, I'm going to use that ultra matte finish. But that's because I want to cover up some of the imperfections of how old these frames and doorways and moldings are. And I'm going to make a little extension that's probably just a couple of centimeters outside my frame because it's so irregular from the plaster to the drywall. So I'm basically going to use the paint as a faux way of making the frame look a little tiny bit bigger than it is so that way I can create the straightest line. Even though this is just an entryway, it had the most detail between the stair banister, the spindles, and the different colors that I'm using. So this is actually gonna take me more time to paint than a lot of the other larger principal rooms. And it's because of the type of painting. There's a lot of little tiny details. But this is showing you there is a sheen paint already that's in a brown on the stair banister. 
And I kind of want to show you in close detail as possible that by using that ultra matte, this way you can kind of not have the highlights of all those imperfections shown by that sheen paint. So when you're trying to disguise some of those imperfections, this is a great alternative. I tried to see if I could get that color that's on the crown molding to work and it's not working. So I'm gonna take up the edge comb gray all the way to the very corner and then to make that ceiling paint that I don't want to paint over if I don't have to, pair nicely with what I've got going on. So edge comb on the walls and then I'm going to be using this little tool to help me get the edges nice and straight. So this is just a painter's edge tool. All hardware and paint supply store carry it. It's got a little track of wheels and you can lift it up and down so that way you don't get paint in it. We found it the most helpful is to actually put the paint on the pad and then place it onto the wall. But this is going to give you nice edged corners and keep your paint and your paint moving exactly where you need it without overlapping and it was just a fabulous tool to use in those hard to reach areas. Now because I did not want to paint the ceiling as it's already kind of this off white but it's not a yellow kind of cream white what I'm going to do to marry that edge comb gray wall paint that I've taken up to the crown molding there's two parts to this crown molding so I'm going to use a different kind of a darker gray tone so that way the ceiling and the wall paint that I've used kind of marry together a little nicer so again I'm just trying to eliminate how much ceiling paint I have to do in this house but at the same time I'd still like to accomplish what I'd like to get out of the whole look so to get to that hard to reach area I'm using that same little method and I'm using one of those sash brushes which is perfect for your staircases and those hard to reach places those circular little tips will help reach those little areas and those little tiny areas that a paintbrush might be more tricky to get to so I really recommend those sash brushes and you can still get your nice clean lines. I have such a true satisfaction about painting my own home. As much as it's a little bit of work it's a huge money saver and believe it or not you really don't need to buy a lot of paint to be able to kind of break up what it is you need to do. So to eliminate how many coats I need to use on these spindles, I'm using the thick chalk paint in just old white. I've already done the lower portion of the spindles of the staircase, and it really helps speed up the process. And now that all the entries are completed in the home, I can really get into those room makeovers and more DIYs, which I'm really looking forward to sharing with you soon. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and please if you have any questions and or comments leave me a comment in the comment box below plus if you haven't consider subscribing and hit the notification bell that's going to tell you when i upload my next video i'm super excited to share so many more fun room makeovers furniture transformations and diy home decor so until next time take care